Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I wanted to bring you a video on six popular medicinal plants. Honestly, there are a lot of medicinal plants that are popular depending on where you live in the world, and there are thousands of plants with documented uses going back thousands of years. So this list is certainly not exhaustive, but it does cover some of the most popular medicinal plants that occur in the United States and other places around the world. From malaria to dengue fever to sword wounds, colds and flus, and even toilet paper, these plants have got you covered for many uses and have been commonly used as medicinal plants for hundreds if not thousands of years. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 7 is bee balm or Monarda fistulosa. Though there are many varieties of bee balm, Monarda fistulosa is commonly grown in gardens to attract bees and butterflies, but the people growing it don't always know that it's medicinal. This variety of mint has purple to pink flowers and a unique floral display which you can see here. Like most mints, it does have a square stem and even smells like mint, and with its opposite leaf structure and lance-shaped tooth leaves, it's rather easy to identify. This plant has been used by native people of the United States for hundreds if not thousands of years for things ranging from headaches to colds, stomach aches, and even has been used to expel worms. One of the active chemicals in Monarda is Carvacol, which is anesthetic, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant. It has been used in things from teas and poultices to salves and tinctures. The dried leaves and flowers also make a fragrant perfume oil or even a pleasant addition addition to meats and sauces. Number six is red clover or trifolium pretense. It's commonly found in lawns, fields, and anywhere else that it can grow, and being a legume, many farmers will use it agriculturally to either fertilize their fields or to provide clover hay for livestock. This common plant has the familiar traits of a clover with its three small, roundish shape leaves that have a characteristic white mark on them. Red clover is a very popular herbal remedy for coughs and to soothe the throat or to relax the body. Being rich in biologically active compounds, the red clover possesses flavonoids, saponins, and phytoestrogens, which makes it a powerhouse of medicinal research, as well as being a possible cancer preventative. This plant is also used for asthma and bronchitis, so basically if you've got chest congestion, clover is one of your medicines. The dried flowers are what most people use off of this plant, and you may have eaten them as a small child for their sweet flavor. Number five is yarrow or Achillea millifolium. This plant has been used for thousands of years going back supposedly all the way to Achilles time as the plant is named after him. This plant's white flowers are a standout sight in the middle of summer and its unique leaves with their delicate lacy appearance makes this plant easy to spot and also a favorite for ornamental gardens. Medicinally this plant is very popular all around the world as it is extremely effective at removing or relieving pain, helping to heal up deep wounds, to stop bleeding, and even more. This plant can be used in soaps and shampoos as it's said to help hair growth but is also antiseptic and antibacterial and helps to improve the skin. This plant's astringent in action is due to some of its over 100 biologically active compounds, which include approximately one dozen anti-inflammatories. Commonly used in poultices and salves, this very bitter tasting plant can also be used in teas, though you should be a little bit careful because it does contain tuhone, which tuhone is one of the main ingredients inside of absinthe, so it can have some negative effects on the body if taken in too large of a quantity or for too long of a time. Number four is common mullein or verbascum thaspis. This common roadside plant is very popular in Europe for an expectorant or to relieve coughs and congestion. With its large fuzzy leaves and tall spikes of yellow flowers, it sticks out very well as the plant can get quite tall. Mullein Mullein has a long history of use going back thousands of years in Europe and in the Americas. Nowadays it's gaining quite a reputation again for its immune boosting properties and its effectiveness at relieving chest congestion. The plant is high in mucilage which is responsible for soothing mucous membranes in the mouth and the throat, and the plant is also a bronchodilator meaning it opens up the passageways to allow for better breathing which is helpful for those with asthma and or bronchitis. It boasts a variety of other uses for things like ear aches and ear infections to bladder and kidney infections and even to expelling worms and humans and livestock. At one point in time, the leaves and flowers were combined with red clovers for smoking to help clear the lungs, and the leaves are still smoked today for this purpose. Also, those really large leaves make excellent toilet paper that is really soft. Number three is coneflower or Echinacea angustifolia. There are many varieties of coneflower, and up until the 1980s, studies that were thought to be done on angustifolia were actually done on another Echinacea variety, Echinacea pellita. This is because coneflowers will hybridize easily with one another, and also the Rutabecchia family, make making it hard at times to determine what exactly is what. Regardless of which, the coneflower is world-renowned for its immune-boosting properties and its ability to stop most colds and flus dead in their tracks when combined with bone set and or golden seal. It has a long history of use within the United States to the natives of the plains who use this plant extensively for snake bites and septicemia. On the frontier, it was used for poisonous spider bites, gangrene, and other bacterial infections that were hard to treat and at one time was the most widely used medicinal plant in North America. The three most common varieties 
species are Angustifolia, Pallida, Purpurea, and are all used interchangeably with Purpurea being the one you are probably used to taking if you have bought modern synthesized versions of Echinacea. Number two is Broadleaf Plantain or Plantago Major. This familiar lawn and garden weed is considered to be a nuisance today and at one time the natives of North America actually called it white man's foot because it went everywhere we went. A member of the same family that many get their psyllium husks from, this plant undoubtedly can be used similarly. A very popular plant amongst old timers and beginners alike because of its effectiveness at providing a cooling, relaxing sensation that is also astringent, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antimicrobial. Another mucilogenic plant that is soothing to the throat and mucous membranes, as well as being a bronchodilator, it has even been used for coughs, hoarseness of the throat, and with supporting herbs to help with bronchitis. The cooling and drawing action or astringency of the plant makes it good for insect stings, boils, zits, sore muscles, rheumatic pain, and to remove infection in abscesses, cuts, and wounds. Plantain contains many anti-inflammatories and antibiotics, according to science, and usually shares a habitat with the white clover in lawns, which also has some similar uses. Number one is Boneset, or Eupatorium perfoliatum. This plant was once one of the most widely used herbs in America, especially when bouts of dengue fever or flu epidemics were prevalent, like in the 18th and 19th centuries. A bitter plant that gets its Latin name from the way the leaves perforate the stem, and its common name from one of the ailments that it was used to treat, dengue, or break bone fever. This plant has shown promising use in malaria due to some sesquiterpenes and flavonoids that have been extracted from it, which gives credence to some of the historical uses of Boneset for treatment of malaria. Common Commonly used as a tea in olden days, it's best in my personal opinion to use it as a tincture now because if served warm, like in a tea, it can cause profuse sweating and evacuation of the bowels. Whereas when given cold, like in a tincture, it helps to reduce fevers, knock out colds and flus, malarias, and even to treat rheumatism. Boneset has shown anti-inflammatory properties as well as immune-boosting properties, and was even used in a poultice for tumors and other inflammatory skin conditions. So I thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible and medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.